Welcome to the Pirate Handyman, where we teach you how to be self-sufficient while saving coin for your treasure chest. If you dig what we're doing, join our crew. Hit the subscribe button, and if you hit that ship's bell there, you'll be notified every time we come out with a new video to help you save more coin for your treasure chest. So today, what we're going to do is show you how to properly mark your circuit breaker panel. Now, it's going to depend on what type of panel you have, but most of them are like this, where the numbers are just indented. So let's get in here closer. And you can see here, it's there's not, it's, it's kind of hard to read. You have to get in the right light. And, you know, especially if you be a one-eyed pirate, it gets real hard to see. So what we're going to show you is how you can highlight it like this and make it much easier to read, and then we're gonna show you some, some labeling techniques. So, first thing we're gonna need is some paint. I like to use a sponge uh, type brush for the brush, and a uh, little cup of water with, some, with a, uh, a Q-tip, and a rag. So, you don't need any type of special paint. I'm sure everybody has some paint laying around the garage. You wanna get white, uh, you know, depending on what color this is, if it's dark, use white. If this is like silver or something like that, then you might want to use black. Uh, for the white, you could also use white out to do what we're going to show you here. Pop the top off of it. Now, because I shook it up, I'm just going to pop the top here because we're not going to be using a whole lot of paint. And there is one other thing you're going to need, and you could use a credit card, you could use a couple of business cards taped together, but something like this to uh, scrape away the excess paint, because what, what we're going to do, you'll see that, you know, these are indented. We don't want to fill it with paint, because that way it'll drip out and run. So we just want to get it in there, and we're going to use this to kind of scrape out the, uh, the paint off the surface, so it highlights the number. And need something just a, a little bit absorbent, but it doesn't have to be terribly absorbent. So the best thing to use is just um, painting tape. So just take a little strip of painting tape here. So we'll put the tape along the edge. And this is how we'll scrape off the excess paint. And we'll take just a little dab. That's about all you need. Let's see if you can see where the number is. And just kind of dab the paint. Do a couple of them there. And you get it as flat as you can. Pull it out. And you can see we've got the numbers there. And I'm going to take my rag, get the excess off, and repeat. Now I'll show you another trick here after I get this one done. Now you can be as neat as you want to here. Frankly, we ain't painting the moaning Lisa, so I'm not worried. I'm more worried about making sure I can read it. So once I get it to where I can read it, now I'm going to take my Q-tip with my water. I'm going to get the end of the Q-tip wet. And then get the excess water off on the rag because water and electricity. <laughs> so you can see I can just kind of go around it here. And there we go. So we'll finish it all up here.
Okay, so now as you can see, it's much easier to read. Now the next thing that you want to do is there's usually a little sticker inside and you can see it's incredibly hard to read. Now this house is 27 years old. <clears throat> you know, I kind of know where everything is, but still, I have a hard time if I'm going in some place in the house where I don't know. Uh, I haven't been there before doing something with the electrical, which we'll cover in another video. So what I want to do is I want to copy all of this and what you can do is using a program like Excel or like Word or something like this, you can just, you know, draw lines and then copy what's on there onto here. And so I've got one for each side, the left side and then the right side. Now you'll notice the big thing. I'm just going to give you some, some other free advice here. Um, when you see a big breaker like this, where they're tied together, this is your 220. And th this is for your big items. This is going to be like your dryer, your oven, uh, your heating, air conditioning, and things like that. And then you'll see on some of these, it'll say GFI. Uh, some of them say GFCI. Now what that means is GFI is ground fault interrupter. You're going to see that any place where it's around water, like in bathrooms, uh, near the sink in your kitchen. And what that means is if you get a short because of water, basically, but really any type of short in there, it's going to immediately pop the little breaker that is in the uh, uh, receptacle itself. And you'll see there's two buttons. There'd be a red button and then a black button. If the red button's out, it means it got tripped. So if you push it in and it pops right back out, it means something somewhere in that circuit is shorted out. So what I'm going to do with these is I'm just going to pin them up. And I've seen people use, uh, I'm using sheet protectors. I've seen people use picture frames. Um, or you can print it a little smaller um, on, you know, some type of sticky paper and put it back in here. But the nice thing about having done it on a computer is when it's on the computer, you've got a record of it. So if for some reason you lose this, you'll have another one someplace. So, hope you dig what we did here. Made it a whole lot easier to read this and know where everything is. Again, if you want to join our crew, hit that subscription button down below and hit that uh, ship's bell notification. That way you'll be notified anytime we put something new out. And leave us comments. If there's things that you want to see, say, hey, I'd like to see you do this or I'd like to see you do that. We'd love to hear from you. But until then, here's to smooth sailing.